Hey guys, what's up? This is Nefis here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install add-ons, what add-ons are, and how to troubleshoot issues if you ever run into uh, any of them when running add-ons. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be uh, giving you guys specific add-ons to try out if you're, you know, beginning out in ESO or if you're console transfer coming over to PC. I'm sure a lot of you have many questions about add-ons. And so just to start off the video, what, what is an add-on? An add-on is basically a third-party software or piece of magical technology that um, the players, other players, code and introduce to the rest of the player population to help us improve our quality of life and among many other things. So, and just to show you guys a few examples of how add-ons work or where add-ons can work, uh, here in the rain in this video, I can see everyone else's damage in relation to mine. I can also see who has a Colossus ultimate up to coordinate the ultimates. We have combat metrics over here, uh, giving us a very brief uh, work down on uh, numbers and such. We have action duration reminder, um, showing me how much time is left on my cast ability. Strandar in the middle of my screen to show me how much time is left on certain buffs like Minor Force, Major Slayer. And we also have an add-on in the trading sector uh, where we can see the sales history of everyone in the guilds, sales history of the guild. Uh, we also have it show us the price based on the recorded sales history of the guilds we're in and many, many more. So as you can see, add-ons are pretty damn important, pretty essential in the everyday life of pretty much anyone playing the Elder Scrolls Online, you name it. We have everything from roleplay add-ons to, um, cooldown add-ons to inventory add-ons to everything, everything you can name. And in fact, the default in-game multi-craft as of Scalebreaker took inspiration, I believe, from the multi-craft add-on, which existed long before uh, ZeniMax decided to implement a base game multi-craft. Now, just to clear up a very basic misconception uh, a lot of people seem to have about add-ons, whether they're from the forums or from console or whatever, they're not cheating. So the reason why uh, console players do not have access to add-ons is basically that ESO uh, was originally just meant for PC and then console came later. And unfortunately, console players did not get uh, access to add-ons, which is very unfortunate because add-ons definitely do offer a significant advantage in quality of life and combat. And a lot of people also seem to think certain add-ons uh, what they do under how they function and what they reveal is cheating. Um, it's not basically if an add-on can do it and the in-game API allows the add-on to do it. I think one of the biggest examples is, you know, uh, if you pick up loot from a dead boss, people who have certain add-ons can see what you picked up in their chat log or something. And a lot of people are very uncomfortable by these uh, ideas of, or concept of invasion of privacy, so to speak, and think it's cheating or should be uh, not allowed. But if it, if the in-game API allows it, it's legal, it's completely within terms of service. And again, it's not very easy to code these add-ons. Uh, I'm I, speaking from personal experience from trying to code the add-ons. It's not very fun, <laughs> or rather for me, it wasn't very fun or very uh, easy. So if you guys actually check out my YouTube channel regular, regularly, um, I do have a series called Add-On of, Add of the Week where I go over, you know, a very special add-on each week and show you guys how it works, what it does, and I I give a special shout out to the add-on developer who makes our lives very easy. Now that we've uh, covered what add-ons are, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install add-ons. Now, there's two methods of installing add-ons. The first is the manual method, and the second is through Minion. I'll get more into Minion later. Basically, what I mean by manually is that you have to go to the website itself. So the website in question here is esoui.com. This is pretty much the only website where uh, the add-on developers flock to and upload their add-ons, and it's pretty much displayed for everyone to see. And this is also linked, the website esoui.com is also linked to Minion, which is the add-on management uh, program you can use if you don't like to manually install it. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to manually install it. So let's say, um, let's just click on class and role specific add-ons, right? Let's see Dragon Knight. So we wanna see, 
I guess, the seeding theory counter. Let's see what it does. We click on it and the add-on developer actually shows us examples, screenshots and such um, about what the add-on does. Now, beam me up, teleport, fast travel. Okay, so something cool about manually installing add-ons is uh, that you can actually go back in the past, into the past and download the older versions of add-ons. Well, Nephis, why, why, why the hell would you download older versions of add-ons? Sometimes newer versions of add-ons may not be to your liking. A uh, big example was Alpha Gear. For quite some time, one the, like the newest version of Alpha Gear a long time ago, which basically lets you swap out gear and skills all at the same time um, uh, with like one button press, was that it did it uh, very slowly, piece by piece, skill by skill. And a previous version of uh, Alpha Gear actually did it much faster. So we do have an advantage of going back to previous old versions if the newer, newer version is not to our liking. So you can find that under other files on esoui.com. And you can also see what changed with the updates. And then we're gonna click download at last. Uh, and then I suggest having a extractor program like WinRAR um, to basically open it up because the add-on files are compressed. You need to extract them. So after you go into here, you're going to go to documents. So on PC and Mac, it's the add-on folder. It will be in documents. Now you have to have installed ESO and then open it up. You cannot find the add-on folder under Elder Scrolls Online live until you open up ESO for the first time and so on. Now, once you find Documents, Elder Scrolls Online, Live, and Add-ons, this is where you can simply click and drag into the add-on folder. And as you can see, I don't want to drag the, like the uh, zip folder itself because if you, you know, let's say, hold on, I'll show you an example. Uh, let's see. Now you... So here we have the zip folder and you don't want to do this, right? Because the game cannot read the zip folders. You don't want to do that. So you want to extract it first or just open it up with an extractor program and then click and drag the file. And then a lot of people also don't know this still. Once you do that and you're in game, like on this character, I'm here. Uh, you do not have to lock out or quit the game to, you know, have the new add-on work. So here we're actually gonna go to add-ons here. And what's really important too is you wanna allow out-of-date add-ons because some add-ons don't need to be updated. Some add-on developers have not updated things, but they still work fine. And if you do, if you don't click this, you'll see that, you know, most of my add-ons that, sh you know, is out-of-date, but they do still work, I can't use. So you always wanna have this checked and uh, we're going to actually reload UI, so we have to do that. Now, you don't have to open up the add-on in the escape settings. Uh, you can just type in slash reload UI into chat, and then your add-on will work. Also, there's these things called library uh, files. These are not the primary add-ons. These are just basically secondary files add-ons need in order to work for you. So same thing pretty much. We need to find on esoui.com lib slash commander and lib zone. So let's look for that right now. Um, lib slash. Right, we got lib slash commander. We're going to download that. And what was the other one? It was lib zone. Okay, and then we're going to do lib zone. Type that into the search bar and download that. Now, same thing as before, we're going to open up the downloads folder. And then we're going to open up the documents live add-ons folder. And then we're going to see if we can transfer these real quick. Okay, we transfer the lib slash commander. And now we're going to open up the lib zone. And then transfer that as well. And then we're going to go back into the game and reload UI, whether you want to type in slash reload UI or uh, just click the reload UI once you get to the add-ons. 
now that we've reloaded UI, we can now see that Beam Me Up Teleporter is now fully functioning. It's got all the libraries and such it needs to work. And a really important thing too, after you download an add-on is to check settings and add-ons because it will usually give you options unless it doesn't because it's sort of a more uh, default thing. Now, Beam Me Up Teleporter gives us quite a few options. It says, uh, turn this on if you want to open Beam Me Up when the map is open, close Beam Me Up when the map is closed. And you can do a lot of things uh, with a lot of add-ons and reposition it and a whole bunch of other options that you get with downloading an add-on. And then you can also go into controls here and see if add-ons have shortcuts that you can keybind. So inventory insight, I can keybind to whatever, like F8. And voila, I can see inventory insight. Stuff like that. Let's see, beam me up teleporter. And here we have, um, we got this. And then it's going to show us to the guild or whatever. And then it's going to also show us here on the left hand side, the fully functioning beam me up teleporter. Now, if you don't like your add-on that you downloaded, all you have to do is go back to your documents, Elder Scrolls Online, live and add-ons folder. Uh, let's say we don't like beam me up. We just click on the entire folder, beam me up and press delete. And that's pretty much it. You go back into the game, reload UI and you are done. Now you guys can see a problem here, obviously. Every time a new patch comes rolling out, a lot of people don't want to go through the hassle of updating add-ons, looking for their add-ons and updating them one by one, file by file. And that's where Minion comes in. Now this is going to be a second method of installing add-ons I'm going to be showing you. And in Minion, we go to minion.mmoui.com and we want to click on the screen button download and then we're going to go to windows 64 bit download 32 bit download which doesn't matter what whichever your uh, system functions on i know some people on 64 bit systems say that 32 bit works better for them but here we're going to do 64 bit and here we're downloading the minion all right and after you've downloaded minion it's going to ask you this will install minion do you wish to continue you click yes and it's going to take you through the uh, minion setup wizard next. And you want to, um, for me, I want to put in my D drive because that's where uh, I have the most space on at the moment. And then I'm going to do next. And I did uninstall minion before this video, before the recording of this video. So I can go through this with you guys step by step. Yes, we will still install to the folder. Next. And install. All right, and then after it's installed, we will launch Minion. And for future reference, when you start up your computer and Minion's still running, it will be in your uh, little tray here. All right, and it's going to ask us to update the client. Uh, we can do later or update now, but just for the purpose of the video, we'll update later. When I agree to the end user license agreement, and Minion would like to scan for the new follow following new games. We have Elder Scrolls Online and World of Warcraft. Um, we're going to do just both because I'm, I don't have World of Warcraft anyway. We're going to continue. And this is, this is where a lot of people, including myself, make a pretty common mistake. I found uh, a lot of people will have reported, well, Minion doesn't work. It uh, doesn't seem to be able to find ESO or it just doesn't seem to uh, go to the add-on directory. Now... Common sense dictates, okay, well, ESO, my ESO file right now is in D drive, so I will not click on C drive. But you need to click, you need to scan all the following drives on this list, whether, um, regardless of whether where, where, where your ESO file is. And then we're actually going to remember settings, don't prompt me again, then continue. And then now avoid the issue of Minion not working. That's pretty much like the number one or number two issue. That a lot of people seem to have with minion and here we're going to just wait on minion uh processing the servers and we're going to select the game and find the add-on folder we're going to do elder schools online and then remember what i said earlier about documents elder schools online live add-ons right and then once you select the add-on folder it's going to show up like this 
Now there are a couple of times where Minion doesn't seem to update. So just restart Minion after you select the add-on folder and you'll be brought back to the screen. And here we can see that, you know, we've tried multiple times earlier to uh, put ESO in Minion. We can just get rid of the extra copies and so forth. Now here, as you can see, it's very streamlined. You can also uh, use a dark theme. I prefer a dark theme. And here we can look through the list of add-ons that we have. And it actually gives us a neat option to update them automatically without going to esoui.com. So we're gonna do that right now. Now, one thing I wanna mention about Minion is that when you update your add-ons, it seems a little weird uh, when you have your game open and you update it. Unlike manually installing the add-on, sometimes Minion sort of bugs out and asks if you uh, ask, see if you want to update them again, even though you did reload your UI and they're updated. So I do recommend turning off ESO and then going through Minion first, just to get rid of any issues that might come out. And here, through ESOUI.com and Minion, we're gonna be looking at many, many, many add-ons that we can install. And that is pretty much it. Um, some issues that have come up with Minion, like files being randomly deleted or whatever, or Minion suddenly not working, I do recommend either completely restarting your computer. Uh, if it still does not, if, if, if your issues do not still get resolved, do restart Minion. And even if that does not work, I suggest running Minion as the administrator. That does seem to fix a few issues at times. That's pretty much it. And um, it's pretty, pretty convenient compared to manually installing through ESLUI.com. Although it drew here, again, we don't have any options to see if we can uh, download a previous version of an add-on, I don't believe. On the video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a brief list of uh, add-ons I do recommend for new players. And there's one thing I need to mention here as well. Do be careful with how many add-ons you're running. Uh, you can deselect add-ons to deactivate them in the game on each character, depending on what you're doing. Uh, having way too many add-ons and definitely heavier add-ons like Master Merchant and so on can affect your in-game performance like frame rates. So I do recommend uh, definitely not activating all your add-ons uh, if you don't need them. Now, one add-on above all else I wanna really recommend to you guys is Bug Catcher. It is an out-of-date add-on, uh, last updated in 2018. However, it still works. And what this does is it basically doesn't let you see the uh, error reports that pop up in game during combat or whatever. Now, this doesn't solve actual uh, conflicting issues you may have when you're running uh, older add-ons that may conflict with newer add-ons. So you have to go through your list uh, one by one on in the in-game add-on list and deselect to see uh, which add-on is causing the issues. But Bug Catcher is definitely one add-on I can recommend first for people new to add-ons as it will get rid of the annoying uh, UI error messages. But yeah, that is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and really appreciate everyone's support uh, of the channel and Twitch. Uh, if you did enjoy the content I just put out, please do subscribe. It means a lot to me. And as always, guys, stay safe, have fun, and see you next time. Let me know if you have any more questions down in the comments below.